Greetings and welcome to the Open Minded Skeptic Podcast. My name is Sharon Ann Rowland and I'm your host. It's the 15th of April 2019 and it's time for our monthly review podcast. This time we'll be reviewing four groundbreaking documentaries, Trumped, Area 51, Voices from the Forest and We Are Legion. Let's begin. The first documentary we're going to discuss is Trumped. Now this is described as a behind the scenes look into the biggest political upset in recent US history. Mark Halperin, John Heelman, and Mark McKinnon follow the rise of Donald Trump from the primaries through to the debates to the drama of election night, 2016. Now I gave this documentary two and a half stars and I kind of nicknamed it the rise of the deplorables or the rise of the mob. Now I did write this documentary back in 2016, this this particular review, and I have to say now I've read it for a second time, I'm completely on the other side of a number of the things I've stated here. So I'm going to have another go at reviewing it. (laughs) Okay, so this documentary kicks off with Trump announcing his run for the presidency. And as usual, in Trump's style, he is entering to the famous Rocky theme, no less. It really is hilarious stuff from, from the very beginning. It's obvious that his run at the 2016 presidency was not taken seriously by anyone in the media or in politics. And they'd have you believe none of the citizens of the USA as well. But we all know in hindsight now that was not the case. Throughout the documentary, Trump is shown to pander to the disgruntled US citizens. Um, And not just to pander to them as people, but also to their more selfish and base needs by ultimately blaming everyone and anyone else. For example, we see a lot of him saying it's the Mexicans at fault or it's another country that is causing work related issues within the US. Now, again, I think a lot of this was cherry picked from Trump's speeches to to preview in the documentary because uh, we all know how they've done that in the last couple of years. Now, he did repeat a lot of the same old 60s style nationalistic wording at every rally US wide. But again, the selection was not flattering to Trump. Was that the intention of the people that put the documentary together? If If it was, then yes, they achieved their goal. However, I'm sure that he said other things at other rallies which they could have included. The first time I felt actual shock was when I was viewing the footage of an actual fellow Republican running mate telling the media point blank that Trump would not be the Republican nominee for the US, but then going on to refuse to state that he wouldn't support a Trump candidacy. I mean, seriously, these people are professional bullshit artists. (laughs) Um, Strangely enough, and I... And in hindsight, it's it's even amazing that I ever wrote this. I've actually written, the only oasis in a swamp of monsters was the affable Bernie Sanders, who alone came across as a level-headed and intelligent humanitarian. I don't see him that way anymore. I see him as a, a raving, loony, delusional socialist now. I mean, serious, heavy-duty socialist. Um... So I I refuse to read the next part of the review because it gives him props and I don't think he deserves any anymore. Now, the second time I felt shock was witnessing Trump at a rally calling out protesters and troublemakers and insisting that the police take them away. And I did feel shock back then because I thought about free speech and shouldn't they have the right to voice their opinion? But in hindsight now, again, I'm thinking, did they actually allow him to speak? I mean, I've seen a lot of these university troublemakers now that um, protest people like Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson, um, Stephen Crowder, and I've changed my opinion on that as well. I mean, I I think if somebody's coming to your campus or or organised an event like this, they should be allowed to speak. Um, The documentary quite obviously shows 
how both parties were too slow to wake up to the truth of Donald Trump's appeal to the masses. Uh, it, it, it does say a little bit about Hillary's baggage, but seriously, they really, they really didn't attribute as much blame to Hillary's side. And in hindsight, again, it really is all Hillary and it's her baggage in 2016. It won't be the same in 2020, that's for sure. So, was it the masses outrage at the media, the political system, and the lack of inaction from their politicians that really got him over in the end? I think it was a mixture of all, all three of those things, and plus the Donald himself. So would I recommend you see this documentary? Um, I think if you vote Democrat, you would like this. <laughs> I think if you're a Republican, you'd, you'd kind of uh, feel uncomfortable watching it because it, it kind of puts him everything bad or everything visibly that you might cringe about your president right on the screen in front of you. Our second documentary slash film is Area 51, which is described as a science fiction horror docu doco film, written and directed by Oren Pelly. Basically, three, three young men go to a party, one of them goes missing, and then he, the one that goes missing pops up in front of the car as his friends are leaving, and he's not quite the same. He's had an experience or he's been abducted. Three months later, the three of them plan a trip to Vegas where they're going to be infiltrating the legendary Area 51 to find out what happened to their friend. I gave this a two stars, um, mostly because it was very disappointing from a conspiracist perspective. <laughs> I mean, um, it was filmed in a similar manner to the Blair Witch Project, um, where we found ourselves on a quest of sorts with Reed and his two best friends, Ben and Darren, to discover what lurks in the lower levels of the underground base situated at Area 51 in Nevada. The movie kicks off with the three at a typical college party with Reed, the leader of the pack, encountering some high strangeness and some relocation, as I said. Um, you throw in some lost time and an amateurish stunned look and you have pretty much the typical abduction experience reported by many people. This movie does little to dispute the negative evil alien persona which many contactees have tried to dispel. This is Hollywood and the military agenda trying to yet again scare the shit out of everybody with images of human eating aliens and such. I'd be interested to see who funded this little project. Was it enjoyable? Not really. <laughs> Just the usual predictable aliens are evil and going to do nasty stuff to you scenario. Um, yeah, okay, I'm taking it from two out of five now to one out of five. Now, our third documentary was delightful. <laughs> it was called Voices from the Forest. A uh, little blurb on it. Sacred Sites researcher Gary Cook wanted to find out whether the fairy folk beings are physical or whether they live in another dimension. Maori folklore speaks of the small fairy folk and they describe them as being three to four foot tall often fair-haired or occasionally witness it, witnessed with red hair and with green or blue eyes and very pale skin. He engaged a camera crew and went into the bush to find out. Never in a million years did he expect to be rewarded so generously when the crew, crew captured a supernatural anomaly on camera. Not only that, during the filming, local farmers came forward with information and testimonials that have made the film an extraordinary experience that will change the way people look at the unseen. So I gave it three stars and engrossing. As a new subscriber to Gare TV, I began to scan through the various documentaries on offer and came across a New Zealand short film called Voices from the Forest. 
Once I'd overcome my initial doubts, read the quality of the film making itself, I became engrossed in the storyline, and in particular the researcher Gary Cook and his endeavours to seek out information on the fairy folk that live hidden from the wider mainstream New Zealand community, but perhaps not the Maori community. The film details the various encounters that have occurred between the fairy folk and the children of New Zealand, mostly, as well as Gary's own encounter of a supernatural nature. I won't go into detail at this point, as it would ruin the ending of the film. If you have a spare hour or so and a subscription to Gaia TV, then go ahead and lose yourself in this interesting and illuminating documentary. You will indeed believe the fairy folk of New Zealand are alive and well. Now our fourth and final documentary is We Are Legion. A documentary on the workings and beliefs of the self-described hacktivist collective, Anonymous directed and written by Brian Knappenberger. I gave this five stars and an awesome. What an eye-opening documentary on the hacktivist group Anonymous's humble and surprising beginnings. I found myself transfixed to the screen as the documentary took me through the grassroots movements, that's movements, that joined together to form the now synonymous brand for civil disobedience. What I loved the most were the up close and personal interviews with its members, especially the members that have suffered prosecution at the hands of the US government. And of course, the clash between the people versus the corporations, AKA the government. The underlying message of the documentary is definitely related to the ideals of being a community, a community that looks out for one another. This documentary is an in-depth and honest look at the difference Anonymous has made in our world and continues to make, and obviously the muse of Mr. Robot creators. Here are a couple of quotes I stumbled over whilst writing this review from Anonymous supporters online. This film, We Are Legion, is most illuminating in showing how democratic practice can still find a new voice and innovative means with each generation. The fascinating efforts of Anonymous can be messy, but so are many freedoms when asserted so boldly. We Are Legion exists at the exact moment in time that it needs to exist. Our generation not only needs this documentary as an official photograph of this important movement, but as a way to get that message out to people who may not actually know anything about Anonymous. This is an absolute must-see film. Do whatever you can to see it. So now I'll leave you with the movement's personal motto. We are Anonymous. We are Legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. Expect them indeed. The film blurs the line between these activists' online anonymity and their real-world identity and makes you want to join the cause. Interesting documentary on the ups and downs of the anonymous movement. It is all about how this movement can at once be united in purpose and then have factions who run in opposition to one another. The filmmaking is good throughout and shows an objective view of the subject. And lastly, my favourite quote. Who knew that the Arab Spring and the Occupy movement could be traced back in part to chocolate rain and LOL cats? Well, that sums it up. You've got to see this documentary. Well, that's all for our podcast. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe, and leave a positive review over on iTunes for the open-minded skeptic. My team and I look forward to entertaining you once again in our next podcast. 
To check when our next podcast is, simply head over to www.tomspod.com. That's www.tomspod.com. Thank you.